Thank you for joining me on this trip. One of the main reasons why I like to hang out in this area and shoot my videos is because this area right here pretty much has just about everything you need to get through the night. As far as tender goes, it's got plenty of water, plenty of wood to work with. And these here are some river birches. This is a wet area down here. So these grow quite a bit here in uh, this part of Indiana. Now next to all these birch trees here, we have a bunch of red pines. And uh, a couple videos ago, I showed you guys the difference or how to tell the difference between a red pine and a white pine. Each cluster on a red pine has two needles and a white pine has five. Now these red pines are filled with fatwood, so maybe next video I'll cut off a limb and see if we can find a really good piece of fatwood and show you guys how to start a fire uh, using fatwood shavings, which are really great in wet conditions. So it's April here in Indiana. It's fixing to rain like crazy. Um, it rained a lot yesterday, but uh, the sun's out today. It's probably not a good idea to wear a black shirt today, but that's okay. But uh, anyways, let's get where we're going. I think this is gonna be it tonight, guys, in between these two trees here. Not perfectly flat. It comes down at an angle slightly, but that's gonna be okay. Yeah, this is an area of the woods that I haven't camped at yet. For the most part, I kind of hang down in the holler from way over there, all the way over there, probably a four or five minute hike that way. I just thought it'd be nice to kind of come to an area I haven't been to yet. You know, I see plenty of stuff around here that I can use. So I think this is gonna be a good spot. So let me get this off real quick. Got my Roy Craft pack out here again. I love this thing. Let me get a drink real quick. All right. All right, I think I'm gonna do things a little bit different today. Normally I'd set up my shelter first and then get my fire ready. But I think I'm gonna start my fire first because in my last video I promised you guys I'd show you how to light a piece of char cloth with a magnifying lens in the sun. And it ain't too much longer until the sun goes down below those trees. I still got plenty of daylight left, but where I'm at, I don't have much time before that sun uh, goes behind the trees over here. And you need the entire sun showing in order for it to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the ground ready, get all these leaves out of the way. And there's a down cedar tree right over there that's pretty dry. I'm gonna get a bunch of sticks together, get my fire lay ready, and then I'll show you how to do it. I'll be right back with you. So what I have here is a red cedar that's down. And I'm gonna cut off a limb here just to kind of show you what the inside of one looks like. Yeah, that's it right there. Let's see, make sure it's in focus. It's more of a uh, purple color. Yeah, it smells good. I love the smell of cedar. But anyway, what we have here is a cedar tree that's been down for a long time. So I'm actually going to grab a bunch of these smaller twigs. Um, really get the fire going you don't really want to cook with this stuff but you can get your fire going with it let all that stuff cook out or let all that stuff burn out and then uh, you're good but when you're going through looking for sticks what you want is that right there you want it to snap very easily you want it to be dry and it should make that snapping sound if it has any bend to it at all it's uh, probably not going to burn very well but give me a few minutes. I'm gonna gather up my fire lay here and I'll be right back with you. Okay, as I've said in previous videos, I don't really have a real fancy fire lay. Just kind of wherever they they fall is where they fall. I kind of 
do like that to give them some space in between. All right, then put a little space right here for my tender. I'm gonna do this a little bit different. Normally when you light char cloth, you could uh, put it in a bird's nest, but you can also take that char cloth and light this just by putting it in here. Now, it'd make more sense to take a ferro rod and just put a spark on this birch bark because it'll go up very easily. But we're just gonna try some different stuff here. Put some of this smaller stuff there. Let's get a decent size here. I may put two little ones together. Now, when the sun's all the way out and it's not being blocked by the clouds or anything, you know, you don't want to, I don't have my hands out here trying to keep it steady. I like to kind of put my wrists against my knees like this. And you're going to see a bead of light on there. And you want to get that little bead of light as tiny as you can get it. It's a small circle. You may have to go out just a little bit, but you want it as small as you can get it. I don't know if you can see that on camera, so I apologize. But it's already starting to smoke. There it is. All right, now we're just gonna put that in there. There it goes. Now, we're gonna quickly get this small stuff on top. Okay, so we're going to, without smothering it, Kind of put some of this on top. Grab my lens here. You can smell that cedar burning too. It's a great smell. Just put this here for now. Some of these leaves back. Okay, once your flame reaches above the current level of fuel you have, you can go ahead and add some more stuff to it. I'm gonna add some thicker sticks here just to establish a nice coal bed here. Now let that burn down while I'm setting up my shelter. Okay, so while that's burning down, I will show you guys how I got my Roycraft set up here. Move the grill out of the way. I just have a trucker's hitch here. That, get that back where it was. It's just a minute to undo everything. Okay, at this point, take everything off, move your frame out of the way. What I'll do is just kind of wrap this around the bottom here. Okay. So, move that out of the way. What I have for tonight is my twin size blanket. I have my Static V ground mat and I picked up a pillow for it. It's the uh, Climant Pillow X Large. Of course I have a poncho, my 64 ounce bush pot, and my 32 ounce bottle and nesting cup. I have a shemog here, a cotton shemog, and then my queen, queen size wool blanket. That's all I brought. Let me grab my, let me grab my haversack here and I'll show you everything I brought in there. Okay, so my haversack. I'm gonna have some jambalaya tonight. That was in there. Baco Laplander. All my fire stuff. Here's the Cajun style sausage. 30 feet paracord. Some napkins. Headlamp. What else do I got in here? Swiss Army knife, ferro rod. 
spoon and fork and that's it I do keep about I don't know maybe a 10 foot piece here it's got a bowling knot on it just uh, for things you know you can use it as a tourniquet stuff like that but that's everything I brought with me pretty much here uh, not too many items I'm trying to make everything a little lighter so yeah anyways I'm gonna get this shelter set up I'll be right back with you in this video I'm not going to go into great detail about how I set up my ridge line here I'm gonna save that for probably the next video. I'll probably set up this exact same thing here. And the reason why is because my last video I made a tripod and an adjustable pot hanger system. And I noticed when I was editing it, you really couldn't tell what I was doing. And there was a few people that left comments asking me to uh, kind of get better camera angles and show you how to do it. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. I could show you all this, but I'm trying to keep my videos between 30 minutes to 45 minutes. You guys seem to enjoy that time frame a little bit better than the hour long videos. So, and I don't want to show too much in each video because I really don't want to run out of ideas and run out of things to show you. So, I'm just going to set this up real quick. I'm going to get the back stake down and then I'm going to uh, get the tripod ready and show you how to do that adjustable pot hanging system again. I like mixing it up a little bit. I like having a mix between traditional and modern type camping gear. This canvas here is more of a traditional type. Although back during the frontier days, they would use probably a, an oil cloth tarp. Um, I like using wool blankets, but also like having modern comfort. You know, a nice air bag, a nice air pillow, something that doesn't take up a whole lot of space and you know sometimes i like to mix it up i don't like to camp the same way twice normally and sometimes i'll just bring trash bags out here fill those full of leaves and uh, sleep on that but today we're just going to have a nice mix of both traditional canvas wool and then some air pads okay i'm not going to air that up all the way I like it a little bit softer. All right. I'm going to the fire now. Okay, from here. Take this out of my pocket. Oh, Whew. that's almost cheating, I'm telling you. Whew. That's more glamping than camping right there. Oh, I could definitely handle that. It's going to be a perfect night. Right now it's about 65 degrees and it's only going to be a low of about 55 tonight. Oh, it's going to be perfect weather for camping. I'm in a different spot. I got a different view. I'm pretty excited about tonight. Okay, now with this tripod lash, I have about 20 feet of number 36 bank line. If all you have is paracord, that'll work too, but number 36 bank line is better. We're just going to wrap it around, come around here. This is what's called a timber hitch. And then from there, we're just going to wrap it. Keep wrapping it around this string. Roughly about four or five times. We're gonna tighten that down. And we're gonna go around all three limbs three times, tightening each time. Grab a hold, tighten. That first one didn't count because it's the uh, timber hitch. So we're gonna go three. Okay, and then from there, we're gonna go in between here. Now this is just the way that I do it. There's a few different ways that you can do it. This is just the way that works for me. Now, we're gonna go in between here three times. One, 
one, pulling it tight each time. There's two. May have to lift up that log at the bottom to create a little space there. There's three. Now, we're going to go around this side. In between these two, we're going to make sure that this is all the way down at the back. There we go. Make sure that's tight. Now we're going to go between here three times. I hope this is showing up well on camera. One. Two. And three. Now from here we're gonna do a clove hitch. So we just go around at an angle bring it back through you want to leave a little bit of slack in here you're gonna come back at an X you see that X there you're gonna come around bring this down now you're going to take the end of your string put it underneath that X just like that Kind of dress it down, make it look nice, somewhat nice. Bring it down here, pull it tight. And if you want, you can actually just use this leftover string here, because I have a, enough left over to where I could just hang the pot from there. But what I'm gonna do is tie a knot here at the end. Feed that through. So that way that doesn't come loose. Take my knife. There we go. And then that should be good and tight. Okay, from there, you bring that middle one out. Now this is tough. Here, let me get it away from the fire so you can see. This is tough. I'm 220 pounds, and this will hold me just fine. So you ain't got to worry about that. It's probably overkill for this little bitty pot that I have. You could probably use some wood that's thinner, but it's better to have too much than not enough. Okay, on this end, we're going to tie a bowline knot. So all we're going to do is just put a loop in here. Just like this. From there, you're going to feed that line up underneath. Go back around the main line. And then feed it back in that line that you came through earlier. Grab a hold of the tag end and just pull the top. From the top, all we're going to do is put this around the top. And then feed the line through okay now this goes all the way down to the fire so this line is probably a little too long all we got to do is just wrap it around one more time come over like that on the bottom we're going to just double the line over it's what I call it anyways doubling it over so you have doubled like this and then you're just going to take that line and tie an overhand knot in it It's going to look like that. Let me do it one more time just to make sure you got it. Okay, so we have take your line roughly about, I don't know, six inches down or so, maybe four inches, just like this. Tie an overhand knot in it. Just like that. Now, we're going to find a stick. And what we do is, we're going to take our pot, 
over like this and then from there we do what's called a marlin spike hitch we're going to just take this line here and feed it through the loop let me move that stick okay like that so let me take it apart you got your handle on here take your line feed it through that loop just like that now in that loop you're going to take your stick and put it in there just like this now in the last video you guys had some questions about the tag in you didn't know what I meant by that this here is the tag in in order for you to adjust this you have to lift up on the tag in and then bring the stick up and vice versa if you want to bring it down you lift up on the tag in push the stick down now obviously that's too low so we're just going to lift up on the tag in you may have to wiggle it a little bit to get it to work Let me see here let me just adjust it a little bit there we go that should be a good height move our tripod we can raise it up just by adjusting the tripod and then bring it back down I'd say that's a good height to start with right there from here I'm gonna get my food ready I don't have a I don't have a cutting board with me so I'm gonna turn this Zatarain's box into one. Perfect. Now, in case you're wondering, this knife is the new Camp and Trail by Self Reliance Outfitters. This is a one pot jambalaya. I normally like to fry up the fry up the smoked sausage before I throw it in there but I'm just going to cook it all at the same time this is already fully cooked so it just needs heated up I just like having that crunch on the outside of the sausage I love Cajun food I love crawfish boils I love gumbo I love jambalaya I eat it a lot love frog legs I love all that stuff Now, from there, get some of that dirt off there. Throw all this in there. be eating good tonight all right so throw all the cardboard in there ain't gonna hurt nothing where's my spoon at that I just got my new spoon this is just a uh, Gerber spork it's got a bottle opener on there it's got a little knife right there so it's multifunctional give that a good stir and another cool thing about it is you can just hang on there like that basically you just bring this up to a boil and then let it simmer that's that's what's great about having this adjustable line on here so I can have it real down really low onto the fire and then once it starts boiling I can bring it up reduce the heat on it and just let it simmer for a while up really good oh, it smells great already we're just getting started I can hear it boiling in there so we're gonna raise this up as high as we can get it take that lid off oh yeah give it a good stirring Whew. smoke follows beauty it's 
constantly getting in my eyes. All right. So, we'll let that simmer for about 20 minutes or so. I'm going to bring it up a little higher because it's pretty hot right at the moment. Okay. Okay. And while that's simmering away, I'm going to relax for a few minutes. Oh. I better not do it too long though, because I probably won't get up if I do. Uh, yeah. Everything's pretty much done, I think. I'm not sure what else I want to do tonight, besides just take her easy. But I do know that I want to take this time to thank all you guys. My last video, the one I came out with last week, did very well. And that's thanks to you guys. Uh, you know, you guys are liking the videos, you're subscribe or you're uh, commenting on them, and you're sharing the videos, and that really helps out a lot. And I do appreciate it. So, you know, I know some of these videos are better than others. Sometimes I'm out here and there's not a whole lot going on. So I appreciate you guys sticking with me. You know, I've, there's a lot of you that comment on every video. You've been there since the beginning, and. Uh, we got a long way to go and I hope you'll stick around for it. Man, it has turned out to be an awesome day. Sitting under a tarp in the woods hearing all the noises, the woodpeckers, the woodpeckers like I was talking about, and all the birds singing with some good grub cooking. They don't get any better than that normally. I'm gonna say that that's done and ready to go. All right, I just kind of took this lid here and slid it on that stick. So we'll put this down there. And from here, all you need to do, bring that stick down, pull it through, and you're good to go. And put this on top, that way that doesn't catch on fire. Let that cool down for a few minutes and then munch on some grindage. All right, so this is the second time that I've used this canvas tarp that I got from Harbor Freight. It was just a $25 six by eight canvas tarp. And the only thing I wish it had, the only improvement I can think of is, I wish it had a tie out point right in the middle because canvas is heavy and it sags a little bit. So if I had a tie out point right there that I could tie another piece of paracord to and then a, tie that to a tree behind me, I could really lift that up and increase the space in here but it's still not bad it's a large enough tarp I can sit underneath there but if any of you guys know a company that makes a good you know at least a 6x8 or maybe an 8x8 either a canvas tarp or an oil skin tarp or our oil cloth tarp I guess is what it's called I'm sorry a good oil cloth tarp something that's got grommets and tie out points and especially one in the middle that would be great you know, I may be able to take this to like a tent smith or something like that and have them sew one on there. We'll see. I don't know if this has cooled down enough yet, but I am starving. Whew. Yep, we're going to have to give that a minute. Whew. And it's spicy on top of that. I'm going to go refill up my grill here. And then by the time I get back, it should be good enough to eat. Okay. All right, here we go. That's good. Now, I'm not gonna waste any of this either. Whatever I don't eat, I'm gonna put it right next to that fire, keep it warm, and I'm gonna eat some more later tonight. It's almost eight o'clock. So we probably got another hour of daylight left.
It's still a little hot. Keep it warm. My wife bought me some new shirts that actually fit a little bit better. My last ones, my last couple videos, it looks like I was wearing a dress. But it's been a long time since I fit in large shirts. Long time. Not since I started driving a truck 10 years ago. And then, like always, this is the part where it gets a little boring, but that's the best part. Got everything done you wanted to get done. Oh, I can't even think straight. I'm so tired. Oh, excuse me. I brought my Roycraft pack frame again. I love that thing, man. You know, I've just brought it simply because I'm, I'm really into frontier type stuff. I love the frontier that period of America. So I really try to do a lot of frontier type stuff. But, you know, I'm also into many different types of camping. I actually got a couple packs that I haven't used yet. I saved up some money for a long time and bought me a Duluth pack, a Duluth uh, Rambler. It's quite a bit of money. And uh, I still haven't brought it out here yet. That's something that you bring when you want to bring a lot of stuff, and I mean a lot of stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, think that if you take too much stuff, then it's not very bushcrafty. You know, bushcraft is a state of mind. That's really all it is. I don't care what you bring as long as you come out here and you enjoy yourself. You know, there's a saying that is, uh, what's that saying? The, the more you know, the less you bring. Yeah, that may be true. And, you know, I'm no expert, but, you know, I do know quite a bit. And so I do come out here with less stuff. But that doesn't make me any more of a bushcrafter than you guys. You know, you want to bring up 40 pounds, 50 pounds worth of crap? Do it. I don't care. Like I said, as long as you're out here enjoying yourself and you're trying to better yourself in the woods, trying to learn new skills, that's what it's all about. We are smoothing it tonight. I really like springtime. Don't have to work as hard as you do in the winter time. As much as I love cold weather, you normally have to have a huge stack of firewood right next to you, and that fire's got to be six feet long for you to stay warm in the winter time. Now I normally make sure I got a good wool base layer, and I'm just layered up to where. I don't depend on the fire so much for warmth, but, you know, the clothing can only do so much for you, but right now it's perfect. It's like 60 degrees out here. It's getting a little chillier. It may get down to 50 tonight, but I normally just keep that fire going just to keep the critters away. There is a lot of wildlife out here. There's owls, and there's turkeys, and there's coyotes, and... The coyotes ain't scared of you out here, trust me. Last time me and Jasper stayed out here, they got very close. They were definitely interested in what we were go what we were doing out here, so I've heard them off in the distance. If you stick around for a minute, you might be able to hear them, but yeah. Yeah, this is the best part of the night. We have accomplished Excuse me. When you've accomplished everything you need to accomplish, it's time to relax and enjoy all your hard work. My belly's full. I'm warm. 
and I'm ready for bed. I guess I'll see y'all in the morning. Good morning. Got a little chilly this morning. Oh, I slept pretty good though. I stayed good and warm. I bet I got about six hours of sleep when you put it all together. Woke up a few times, but it's a pretty good night. I need a new belt. This thing's seen better days. All right. Well, I don't normally cook breakfast. I normally just get everything gathered up, go home, maybe get something to eat on the way. So, oh man, wake up, here comes the geese, okay we'll set this on top of the tripod, Okay, in case you didn't see my video where I brought the Roycraft pack frame out here, go ahead and show you. Put everything in the middle. Try not to clothesline yourself with your ridge line. And there, fold it over, fold the sides over. Then I'll do a little half fold here. We'll bring it up. We'll do the same thing here. Right there. I'm going to show you what's so great about this quick deploy ridge system. It's quick and easy to take down. We're going to take our Prusik knots, slide them all the way to the end. We set this up to where you can reuse it. So you just pull this line out right here. Maybe. There we go. Get all the line through. Take this and pull it. ready in a matter of seconds. Now, I'm gonna show you how to wind this up so you can reuse this. You don't have to bring out paracord every time. You don't have to bring out a new piece. You can just reuse this. Save your Prusik knots, that way every time you're out here, you don't have to make new Prusik knots. We'll slide them all the way down to the end here. I'm just gonna put it in between our fingers like this. So we're gonna put them like this. And we're just going to go thumb, pinky, thumb, pinky. This is about 30 feet, I believe, of ridge line. You can use 25. Now, when you got about, I don't know, maybe four feet or so, take your thumb underneath, grab it tightly, and then just wrap. Keep wrapping, keep wrapping. And then 
just finish it off with you know clove hitch or a half hitch whatever you want to use but like I said next week I'll show you guys how to set this up just takes a few minutes and uh, I'll probably just come out to this same spot this is a really nice spot I'm on top of the hill got a nice view down over the holler it's beautiful back here but this only takes a few minutes to uh, set up and put down so keep that with you at all times okay so we're going to get this Roycraft pack on we're going to set it up a little higher on my back that way it's a little bit more comfortable bring it around here okay now you want to tie a knot that you can get out of quickly so I just tie it like you do a tennis shoe you know in case you fall in the water and this thing's holding you down or for any reason you need to get out you can just pull it and it'll drop my haversack on I think I'm gonna clip this just right here well friends I think that's gonna do it for me on this little trip here um, I know I said a few minutes ago that next week I'm gonna come back out here but I was thinking about it I may not be able to come out with a video uh, next weekend I'm not sure yet so I've been trying to you know keep a consistent schedule but you know things happen you know I work a full-time job and you know i try to get hit out here as many weekends as i can but i just want to thank you all for the support that you've shown me i'll uh, thank you all for liking and subscribing and commenting and all that it really helps the channel out uh, i'm going to try to leave links to all the gear that i use down in the description box a lot of you guys have been asking me to do that so i'm going to try to get as many links to all the gear that i use and also if you have a facebook or instagram and want to follow me on there i've been posting a lot more pictures lately i'm kind of new when it comes to those social media things so here lately I've been really trying to take extra pictures while I'm out here and, and put more content on there so if you'd follow me on there that'd be great but as always thank you for the support and I'll see y'all on the next one